the um, to kind of tell a little bit about sort of my story and, tr and how it got a lot better. Um, I grew up in uh, mid Michigan, sort of uh, you think factory and farm country. Um, so my mother sort of really did truly grow up on a farm until my grandfather sort of st it's his tie. Um, <laughs> until he until he uh, went to actually work at GM when GM actually moved into Flint, uh, Flint, Michigan. So he went to work there. So it's pretty rural. Um, I went to a, a, my graduating class in high school was about 75. I started coming out my sophomore, junior, I started coming out to myself sort of actually very early, um, right from the beginning of the, the beginning of time. I sort of did not understand um, when I was told that I was supposed to marry a woman, I did not understand. It did not actually, it was something that didn't compute with me um, from the very beginning. Um, I started coming out to friends and, and family about 16. Um, so my coming out sort of spanned probably three or four years. Um, the first sort of time that it was sort of out loud and with another person was with my mother and it was driving, it was after sort of the driving exam, like at, when I was 16, we're in the car and she sort of leaned over and, you know, she knew I was depressed and I was sad and I was going through my little gothy phase where I only wore black. And she sort of looked at it and she was like, it's not, it, you're not gay. And I looked at her and it was sort of a shock that she sort of said, you're not gay. And I was like, I am gay. I'm completely gay. Like, that's exactly what this problem is. You know, like, and I don't know how to express it, and I didn't know how to get it out. And it, and it was really, it was really awful. And she sort of said at the time, you know, you're not gay, and how do you know? And, and I was just like, I just do. And of course, I'm driving, and I'm petrified of driving anyway. So I feel like in some sense, my mom, who's a relatively meek person, I felt like, you actually trapped me. Like, I can't actually, I can't get out of the car. Like, I'm actually driving. Um, so it was sort of, it, it was really kind of torturous um, in that sense, and, and, not, and aggressive for her, actually, and extremely aggressive if you ever meet her. Um, so I was kind of, it pushed me, I don't want to say it pushed me back in the closet, because it didn't. I sort of then, it actually enabled me to sort of start saying, yep, that's exactly what it is. I'm going to, you take, I'm going to take the label that she sort of gave me and sort of, and, and, and say that I'm gay and sort of to myself and start getting used to the word. And I did that a little bit throughout when I was 17, when I was a junior, um, I told a teacher. Um, I actually told the teacher and I, I explained the situation to her. And she was wonderful. She was absolutely 100% wonderful. Um, and she was completely open to it. She, there were no other gay people that I knew of in the community that were in the leadership, so there wasn't a reaching out. There was no internet. There was no, there was no exposure. I mean, so it was 1986, 1985, around this time period. So the best that you could do is uh, an after-school special. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's the only gay person that I actually saw was sort of a character on TV. So I had no idea, sort of, that you know. They work. They they go to. They have a job. They they have kids. They have a dog. They have a, a husband, a wife, a, you know, a partner. Um, that I did not see at all. I just did not have that opportunity. Um, so when I started, you know, so when I went to sort of applied for schools, I was sort of dating. Some, uh, dating. I had a best friend. Um, friends with privileges, kind of thing. And so it was hard to sort of describe that relationship to myself to anyone um, because it was somebody that I really cared about, but. I don't know what fate sort of made me sort of realize I'm not going to follow him, I'm going to go to Boston. And so I applied to many different schools, but I really wanted to be in an urban environment. Um, and then I went to BU. Um, along that time, I started coming out to some of my friends in high school, and I immediately went back into the closet. I sort of landed at this big school, this big urban environment, and it, and it was really scary, like actually sort of being at this big school, I'm a f I realized immediately, oh wait, you're a first generation college student. I, no one sort of could prepare me sort of what college would look like. And so I landed at this gigantic campus and it was completely overwhelming. There were people, I, I grew up on a farm, there were people, you know, my roommate drove a Range Rover and complained when his parents switched it for a Beamer um, and would, you know, floor length cashmere quotes that he was walking around in and he's a seven feet tall, you know, so this was sort of, this was weird to me. <laughs> so I didn't really know how I fit in and kind of what happened was is then I started actually meeting gay people at school. And I was like, okay, this is fantastic. I wasn't ready to sort of tell my two male roommates that I shared a room with that I was gay. Um, but then they moved out. I got sort of a weird, set, a weird fate, a twist of fate is one went, a, went abroad, essentially, and one, they were juniors. And then one decided to take a leave from school. And the, I will sort of add, the one that took a leave from school was because he was trying to come out and could not figure out a way to come out. And he actually took a leave from school. Rather than sort of share it with me, um, we didn't come out to each other. 
um, which was sort of really sad to look back on. Um, as soon as they left, I ran screaming out of the closet. <laughs> and I don't know where it really came from. I think I, I would say it was, um, we didn't have, BU didn't have a center like this at the time. Um, but there was a person that was at the community service center that was an openly gay person that was just, just gay. Just nothing else. There, he had faults. He had wonderful things. He was just everything that I could sort of see was completely a person that was functioning in society and gay. And I was just like, that's it. I'm done. I'm coming out. And at that point, I just started telling everyone. There wasn't anyone that I hid it from. Um, I started making phone calls to people back home. I lost some friendships along the way uh, for both in school and from home high school student, you know, friends from high school. That was really, really hard. Um, I started coming out to my siblings. Um, and I left my brother for last. And my brother is <coughs> two years younger than I am. So he's, he's, we're almost identical. So you would think that we were almost identical twins. And I sort of saved him to last. I did it in person over the summer of my first year. He was the last family member that I came out to. I told my mother. My mother sort of, again, she was more accepting at this point. She sort of knew what was going on. But I did tell her. And she sort of was just like, but you're not having sex with anyone. And I was like, aha. <laughs> I was back then. I just didn't tell you. Um, and then, uh, you know, being a... 19 year old I sort of felt like I had to sort of like be a little extreme but um, <coughs> poor mom <laughs> the um, but I did my brother last and I think that's sort of the part of the coming sto uh, story I want to sort of tell which and it relates to sort of how relationships can get better is my brother at first was a little bit in denial and a little very very quiet about it um, and I think to be perfectly honest you know we shared a bedroom growing up the entire time till 18 so of course there was this uh, you know I don't think that he thought he was going to get infected but I think that there was a sort of, like, I shared a room with you. We did everything together. You know, like, it, it was very, very hard for him. And I think at the time, I wasn't ready to sort of see that. And I think when I stepped away from it, I was able to sort of see how that, how, how that could have affected him in some sense. And what, I, what happened, essentially, is that we sort of grew apart, of course. Um, and and it, was, it was hard, but I was in college, and I was about graduating from college, and that was really hard for me <coughs> to just even get through college, to be perfectly honest. Um, to get through as sort of gay, first-gen, sort of whatever I want to identify myself with. And it was just hard to be at a big university and do that. And I did it. Um, and, I, I, you know, I came out. I started dating. I was very out. I, I, I went through an extreme case where I was very gay. Um, I, I would say that I needed to be at, in, at the clubs, at every organization, doing everything. Um, and sort of what happened over time is, uh, you know, I, I developed a lot more friendships with people that, that were people that liked me because I was a computer scientist, they liked me because I was gay, they liked me because I'm kind of a nerd and klutzy. Um, and so what started, and, they, and I liked musical theater. So what happened, <laughs> strangely enough, is I started to reconnect with my brother. Um, and we started to get back and we were kind of talking. He uh, met somebody that he liked and he, he got married um, and I was the best man in his wedding. Um, we started, started to reconnect a little bit. And so the, the big part that I want to sort of share is that I, I have a partner. Um, I never thought that that was going to happen. I, I thought myself somebody who would just kind of date or on the side be that. I didn't really see myself as somebody who was married because, again, that was my personal sort of discrimination that I uh, that I'd brought to the, to the table. And I broke that, and that, so I'm very proud of that. But what I'm more, even more proud of is that my nephews, my brother has two sons, um, it's unclear on the younger one, but <laughs> that's me maybe pulling in a bias of trying to hope. But they look at my partner Paul as Uncle Paul. They have never not known him their entire life. When, they've, when, he, when he visits, <coughs> they ask for him first. Mm -hmm. When they want to be on a team, whether we're doing a team of competition for Scrabble or whether we're doing a baseball team, they want to be on his team. Um, he is by far their favorite uncle of all. And so I think for me, I look at that and I'm able to step back and I look at my family and I see that my brother is completely integrated. Uh, we are best friends again. We are best brothers, as it were. His wife, my husband, they are best friends. And the kids see both of us equally as uncle. I never could have possibly seen that sort of scenario ever. And I think the other sort of coming out scenario that I, that I want to go back to is sort of the seeing myself, seeing that sort of person that I thought somewhere, I don't, I hate the word normal in some sense, but the idea that they were sort of gay and doing something. 
Um, and I think one of the things that's amazing for me here at Tufts <coughs> is I am gay and a computer scientist. And many people actually joke in the department when geek actually trumps gay with me. Um, and there was something that happened and um, they were going through and they were, and I was like, no, that's Beyonce. And they were like, oh, there's gay trumping geek there. No, I really meant this or that. So there's, it's fun to sort of have that play um, and be out in a lot of different ways within my department, within Tufts. Um, not that it comes up in class very much. Gay doesn't come up in class, but as most of my students do know, just through interactions with me, that, that that's a scenario. And I never thought I'd be in that position. I never thought I'd be in a, a gay professor doing computer science and have everything be sort of just what it is. So it gets way better. <laughs> <laughs>